Hey guys, I wanted to say a little bit today, or this week, about YouTube atheism and what happened to it. What, where did it go? So, you may not be aware of this, but like, rewind the clock back to the early days of YouTube, or just the early days, not the early days of the internet, but once the internet had kind of just started coming of age, maybe, I want to say, 04, 05-ish, maybe a little later maybe 06 you were to, if you were to go to YouTube or something like that and type in the word G-O-D God you would get like this of like the whole page of everything would be like anti-God stuff you know what I mean like and in the comment sections of anything you're gonna get like just exploded on never believe in God it's the dumbest thing ever and uh it's not like that anymore. If you go type in the word God on a YouTube search today in 2016, October, it's not going to be like that. You're going to see completely different stuff. You're going to see just as much stuff uh, pro-God and, and, and even like, you'll see like kooky religious stuff like way out there, you know, but it's not going to be all these atheists, you know. And so there's this question of like, well, what happened? Um... There's kind of a story that's told that a division happened within atheism, and there started to be divisions happening within sort of this larger atheist movement. And atheism is kind of hard to hold together because it's not really a movement per se, but there was kind of a movement to just get rid of religion at the time, spearheaded by you know the guys who called themselves that. that they call themselves the four horsemen of, of atheism, the new atheists. And you had, it was Daniel Dennett, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, and uh, Christopher Hitchens, who's not with us anymore. And so, at, a, at one time, there was this kind of this movement. There were like atheist conferences, and there were all these YouTube atheists, and different stuff you were reading online. Um, and it got to be a big thing. I remember uh, there was an ABC debate between the Rational Response Squad and Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron about the existence of God, you know, and it was on like Nightline or something like that. And I think you can still watch it. You know, and it was it was kind of a thing. And there's this question of like, well what happened? And if you look at it today, most people in the atheist community, if it is a community, to some degree it is, they seem more concerned about attacking what they call social justice warriors or SJWs, you know. And that seems to have taken over their dialogue and what they talk about. And so if you retrace, there seems to be a kind of you know, so so Thunderfoot puts it, he says that they would have these conferences where, you know, you, you would go talk about the spreading the cause of atheism and just getting rid of people believing religious nonsense for no reason because it's bad in so many ways. Um, they, he said these conferences got invaded by these people, by these, like, they call them third-wave feminists, you know, social justice warriors, you know, all that. Um, and the way he describes it, that's kind of what happened. And what I want to say to you today, I don't want to comment on that today because we could talk forever about that. What I want to say is, that's not exactly what happened, okay? Because I was right there following it, and honestly, I've always been someone who's watched a lot of atheist stuff, and I would watch a lot of Christian stuff, you know, that would go, it would prove Christianity, and a lot of atheist stuff to disprove Christianity, and I would want to hear both sides, and I, I eventually... I personally, I got, I got so familiar with what's wrong with atheism that it was kind of not stimulating to me at all, and not it was kind of boring to me to point out the flaws in atheism, to point out the dumb stuff with atheism. So I eventually, I got to the point where I was like, towards the end of it, I was watching nothing but atheists. I was, you know, nothing but Christopher Hitchens, even after he's dead. I was just like. Because there was this celebration of the great stuff Hitchens had said, and I was, I was just, and then all the the lesser known guys, I was just like atheist, 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 you know, and like, because for me personally, like, the stuff that, yeah, I don't agree with them because I believe that God exists, and they have like, a sort of a laundry list of really dumb things they say, but for me, it got it got to where it was kind of cute, 
you know, it's like a little baby who thinks, you know, that like, uh, if you let a balloon go, you know, up and you can't, it's too high to reach it and you, your ladder, you can't get on a tall enough ladder to reach it. Well, we'll get a helicopter and we'll, we'll go get the balloon. You know what I mean? That's like, it's just like so dumb. It was just cute. And like, I just didn't, you know, take it too seriously. I, I hate to be that belittling, but like, I, I, that is the truth. I'm, I'm bearing, you know, how, I, and so the thing is I, I enjoy watching them and enjoy watching their videos because everything they say is not stupid. And I think when someone says something that makes a lot of sense, that needs to be celebrated, encouraged, even if, even if it's one grain of something that's awesome in like a sea of stupidity, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, as they say. Like, because a lot of times their criticisms of, of religion aren't always bad. Like, they have some good, some of the stuff they say needs to be said, and they make some valid points. And so that's kind of like, for me, I was like, yeah, like, you know, I, I'm with you. And honestly, when it comes to proving God's existence, it's a lot easier to bring that up with atheists than it is with Christians. Because Christians become very emotional and they want anything they can do to like shut that conversation down it's like a it's like a mental breakdown of just like ah, don't talk about that you know and uh i think you know i was talking with someone the other day and he told me like that's probably because someone who's an atheist has taken the situation of what i believe and they've confronted it and said okay i'm going to follow the evidence where it goes and follow follow, you know, whatever I can prove to be true, that's true, and if I can't prove it to be true, that's not true. Whereas someone who's religious, nine times out of ten, you know, rough, super rough estimate, generally speaking, maybe a better way of putting it, that they have just come up in a system where faith means not questioning what you're told. You know, and so when I start coming in with proof, it's implied that I'm saying it's okay to question what you're told, and they're just like, nyeh, nyeh, and they just, that's like, you know, they just freak out, you know, and they just start coming at you with anything. And the adults would be just as bad, you know. So what I'm saying is, like, I found a lot of joy in listening to atheists because, that you know, they straw man their opponents and they, they take the weakest opponent and attack them. You know, they do all this dumb stuff. And, like, like for example, you know, Thunderfoot's uh, criticisms of the Kalam cosmological argument were, were a joke. They were hard to take seriously, but I can just kind of like, hmm. You know, and just wait and see if he says something. You know, because I like to hear people. I like to listen to people that I super disagree with, on the off chance that they may they may say something that I've never heard before. You know, and and to be challenged in what I think and maybe refine what I think a little bit. I like that. I enjoy that. You know. Um, but the point I want to make is about William Lane Craig. Is like, really, that was when the tide started turning. That was when because that. In other words, before the social justice warrior thing happened, the William Lane Craig thing happened. And there was, he became renowned in the atheist community. You can even watch the Sam Harris debate where Sam Harris, you know, with debate, debating him at Notre Dame. He says, like, he's the one Christian who puts the fear of God in so many of my atheist brethren. You know, the way I think something like that, sort of like that, we said. And, like... Yeah, it was by that point, by the time he was debating those guys, and then it was the thing where Richard Dawkins like refused to debate him because he wasn't a big shot enough, and Richard Dawkins had all these like lame excuses why he wouldn't debate him. Like, yeah, because a lot, honestly, he what I saw was a lot of the nonsense that atheists said. Other atheists started criticizing. They started criticizing each other with some of William Lane Craig's points. And they started saying, no, 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 that doesn't make sense, and that doesn't make sense, and Wimley Craig's right about this, and you guys need to stop saying this, and that, there started to be sort of some of that. And uh, the real, the real, the thing that probably had spearheaded it the most was this channel, it was called Dr. Craig Videos. Now today, it's run by Wimley Craig, and it's totally different, but back in the day, <laughs> in the day, you know, like 10 years ago-ish, like, it was run, run by, it was a troll thing. Like, it was like no one knew who ran it. The guy, like, or girl, whoever, the robot, the alien, like, was completely, you don't know who I am. And 
I think at one point the person claimed to be an atheist who just really respected William Lane Craig and his ability to point out the stupidity of atheists. But like, the thing is, uh, he really mocked the stupid stuff that atheists said, and he he used clips interspersed with a few words of or his or her own in between, and like. The mockery was just like, he, that channel just really, those older videos on that channel just really would just take clips of stuff that atheists say and interpose it with something, uh, you know, William Lane Craig would say with, with, and then like interpose it with a few like just text words from the, from the uploader and like it just really just kind of tore them to shreds in a lot, on a lot of, and like they weren't just getting away with everything anymore. You know what I mean? Like before they, they had, the, the atheists had kind of had this sort of, when it comes to reason and logic, we've got it covered, you know, and like it wasn't so clear anymore. And I think that played a bigger part in YouTube atheism. And so I, what he did there uh, in many ways motivated me, you know, to make my channel. My channel hasn't had that kind of influence. And I think Dr. Craig videos got a little bit nastier than I would have liked to have gotten. But... I mean, he, the, the channel even got referenced from Richard Dawkins. He was so, he didn't like it. He said it, that the existence of that channel and the disrespect of that channel was one of the main reasons that he wouldn't debate William Lane Craig. I mean, so, I mean, there's no way around the fact that their momentum was largely due to you know, the, the the ending of their momentum was largely due to William Lane Craig. There's no way around it. Like that's that I mean if if you if you followed it back then, you know, like what was it, oh eight, oh nine ish, twenty ten, eleven ish, something like that. It was just poof. And you see a change and you see a change to this day. And like you hear atheists today on comment threads and forums and stuff like and if they say stuff, you know, like they just read the God delusion it's just like hard to take them seriously. It's like, what are you like some sort of, you're like the baby atheist here, you know? And it's getting to the point where like the evil Bible stuff, I don't know if you've ever been to evilbible.org, like a lot of that stuff's getting debunked. No, the Bible didn't teach slavery, you know? And it's, it's just, it, these old arguments against Christianity are almost seen as quaint and sweet. Oh, it's, uh, I remember those days when y'all thought that made sense and it was an issue. But most of you don't think that makes sense anymore unless you're like 12, you know. <laughs> no, the Bible doesn't teach slavery and, you know, all this stuff. And a lot of that stuff, it was, you know, Christian apologetics in many ways got online and responded and did its job. And so that's kind of where I'm at. But the situation we're in today is a quite different one. Um, it's not Christianity that's under attack. It's some of the values we have as Christians like free speech and yeah, free speech, freedom of religion, uh, some of those things might be more under attack and it, it, you know, so we've got to, I think there's a need to sort of redirect what we're doing, but I just wanted to talk about the history of what happened and I'm always here to like talk about religion and explain it and typically what I find is the only people that are really those old like atheist arguments it's like really like it's young people you know and they'll get online and they'll see like Richard Dawkins stuff he's still spouting off the same nonsense all they they're just they're typically they just you know they haven't these young people haven't encountered anything defeating any defeaters for Dawkins or Harris or those guys and but the movement largely is over, you know, and it's kind of settled into we're in this camp, but we're in this camp, but the atheist camp will admit that the Christian camp makes some sense sometimes, you know, <laughs> and that not everything, you know, it's not the, you know, William, William Lane Craig's arguments for the existence of God aren't that bad, you know. <laughs> um, but so in my experience, the only people you see that like take those new atheism arguments very seriously tend to be just people who are too young to, to, they're just new to it. And that's kind of the way things are today. I think when I was a teenager and when I was in middle school, you just didn't encounter opposing views. 
um, because there was no internet, and so you were just let you were more limited in your range of influences. But today, these kids will encounter it. But at the same time, there's pro Jesus stuff too. So it's it's a completely it's just like a I think to in the future, encountering atheism and skepticism about religion is just something you'd have to go through to go through middle school and high school. That's just part of middle school and high school. And it's just going to in the future that's going to be part of it. For me, back in the back back in the nineties, it was not part of it. And you just you didn't most people didn't know what a Muslim was. For me personally I did encounter it, but for the population at large, not a thing. So you're going to encounter it, young people, and there's tons of good answers, but as a movement throughout the early two thousands and going on into the late two thousand O's the Audis, whatever you call them, it's over. It's over, and it, you don't. You're gonna type in God. You're not gonna see. You're not gonna be blasted with anti-God stuff, and you know the atheist movement got so big that like you had people who just wanted to piggyback off it just for their own personal fame and that kind of thing, and, and you know push their social justice warrior agenda. That did happen. They wanted to push their movements or push their name. Like someone like uh, Jacqueline Glenn. I mean, she. She had some of the dumbest stuff to say, and it was really upsetting. I went up first, like, all right, so she's getting a jillion views. Richard Dawkins is tweet about her, how great and smart she is, and then she, like, explodes in views, and then she gives a, a reason why she's not a Christian, and it's, like, the worst arguments of all time. All time. But she's even being criticized by other atheists today. Like, So, like, for example, her arguments against the existence of God were, like, that Jesus was just... Uh, par uh, copied from mythology and that the mythical guys like Mithras or Hercules or Horus of Egypt, you know, they they were earlier stories that parallel the Jesus story so identically. Other atheists know how to debunk that now and won't let, won't let an atheist get away with that. In other words, other atheists are going to come out and call you out on your nonsense and do the apologetics for us today. So, it's over, boys and girls, okay? It's over, and we're going to keep coming. We're going to keep coming. So, quick little video that wasn't super planned out. I hope this made some sort of sense. Thank you for your time.